Hello everybody. In this lecture, I am going to discuss about different types of schedulers. The basic objective of a scheduler is to assign the processes to the processor that means inside the CPU in such a way so that the processor utilization and the throughput is maximized. We never want that a CPU is sitting idle. So, always our intention should be to make the CPU busy. The scheduler is working in such a way so that it is always making the processor or the CPU busy. If the CPU is busy all the time that means its utilization is very good and then the throughput or the outputs produced per unit time is also maximized. That is the basic objective of a scheduler. In our computer system, we are having actually three types of schedulers. In case of long term scheduler or LTS, it selects the processes from the uh, secondary storage device to the main memory. That means the scheduler is bringing the processes into the ready queue. It is invoked very infrequently. At a time, it is bringing some of the processes from your secondary storage device to the main memory. That means it may be very slow and it is invoked either in seconds or maybe in minutes. And it controls the degree of multi programming. That means how many processes are there at that moment in your ready queue. That means when the processes are created, they are in new state and they are residing in your local disk or in the secondary storage device. It is the responsibility of the long term scheduler to bring them inside some of them, some of them into the main memory that is in your uh, primary memory. Next comes the short term scheduler. This short term scheduler is also known as CPU scheduler. It selects which process should execute next and allocates the CPU. That means now in our ready queue say we are having 4 or 5 processes. Let me draw that figure. Say this one is your ready queue. And say there are 4 processes. Process P1, P2, P3 and P4. So, the degree of multi program is 4 now as 4 processes are there inside the ready queue and these 4 processes has been taken from the disk to the main memory. So, there are new processes and then they are taken inside the ready queue so they are becoming the ready processes now out of these four ready processes which process will come inside the cpu is the responsibility of the cpu scheduler so say process p1 is taken inside the cpu this thing has been done by the cpu scheduler here the job scheduler is playing its role. Now it is invoked very frequently that means not necessarily when process P1 is taken inside the CPU it will hold complete and then it will come out of the CPU after that process P2 will go. We know that the processes are running simultaneously. Basically inside the CPU they are running sequentially but at a time two or three processes can run parallelly. One will go out of the CPU then it will go out from the CPU to some input output device another process will come inside the CPU like that. So, the CPU scheduler is invoked very frequently in milliseconds. So, it must be very fast. And third term is the medium term scheduler or swapper. It swaps out the processes temporarily. For the time being, it may take the processes from ready queue to out to the disk and it balances the load for better throughput. Now next, 
coming to the details of this long term scheduler this long term scheduler is also known as the job scheduler so the responsible responsibility of the job scheduling is that it is responsible for creating new processes and bringing them into the system which i have already drawn here these are the new processes stored in your disk and then the job scheduler is bringing the processes into the main memory and now these processes are ready so new processes are becoming ready processes due to lts or long term scheduler so this is the responsibility of the job scheduler this job scheduler determines which programs are admitted to the system for processing that means inside your disk there may be several new processes so many new processes are there out of this set which processes which small subset of processes are taken inside the main memory has been determined by the job scheduler that's why it is written that it determines which programs are admitted to the system for processing it controls the degree of multi programming that means at a particular instant of time how many processes will be there in your ready queue it is determined by the job scheduler here i have drawn that at a particular instant of time there are 1 2 3 and 4 processes that means now four processes are there in the ready queue and the degree of multi programming is 4 it attempts to keep a balanced mix of processor bound and io bound processes now here comes a new term processor bound process and io bound process the processes which are created and stored in your disk they are basically of two types some processes are there which are spending most of their time doing any computation task so they need the cpu more than they need any io devices work the whole time is actually divided into two parts one is the computation task part and another one is the io task part the time it spends doing the computation task is called the computation time period and that time period has to be spent inside the cpu and the time it spends for doing any io task is known as io time so those processes which are spending most of their lifetime time period doing io type of job they are known as io bound processes and the processes which are having mostly computation type of task so they need to spend more time inside the cpu so they are known as computation bound processes or processor bound processes now when the long term scheduler is selecting the jobs from this disk and taking them inside the main memory they are having a proper mix or blend of processor bound and io bound processes so that cpu and io device both of them are utilized properly so cpu usage becomes high as well as system performance is also becoming high next comes the cpu scheduling or short term scheduling now there are certain questions who is doing this cpu scheduling the short term scheduler the sts the sts is responsible for cpu scheduling that means from this processes which process will get the cpu that is the responsibility of the short term scheduler where ready state to running state that means the processes which are residing in the main memory is ready queue they are in ready state but when they are taken inside the cpu they are in the running state that means ready state to running state which process will go from ready state to running state that is the responsibility of the short term scheduler or cpu scheduler when it is happening when a process moves from run to termination run to wait run to ready then cpu scheduler is invoked for example run to termination run to termination means inside the cpu say process p1 is running now when next the cpu scheduler is invoked 
say this running process has completed its task it is executing the exit system call and then it is coming out it is becoming terminated that means from running to terminated state this process has completed its task it is terminated cpu becomes idle or free then it is the responsibility of the cpu scheduler to allocate take a new process from the ready queue to the cpu so that the cpu will not sit idle and this is the main motto that we must utilize the cpu to the maximum so when a process is going from running state to termination state this cpu scheduler is invoked second one is running wait state that means say due to any interruption or any io call the running process is going to the waiting state say it is coming for any io type of task and this io device is also having a queue for it where different processes are waiting to get this io so this process will come out and will stand behind the queue it will not get the io at that time period when it is coming because in front of it there are several other processes so it must wait there that means run to wait state and third one is run to ready state then due to say some interrupt if it comes out of the cpu and goes to the ready state or uh, say um, goes to the ready queue again then its state changes from run to state ready state then the cpu scheduler is again invoked and picking another process from ready queue and pushing it inside the cpu so for these three reasons from running state to termination state from running state to waiting state from running state to ready state cpu scheduler is invoked another criteria is that from new to ready the process is here and then it is coming to the ready state then also when a process is just created cpu scheduler is taking that process and giving it the cpu it is invoked and wait to ready which i have already called that here the processes are waiting when it completes the io task it goes to the ready queue again so waiting state to ready state this one is the waiting state so waiting state to ready state when it goes then cpu scheduler is invoked again so for these three reasons the cpu scheduler is invoked that means when the process is ready then sts is making that process running one the short term scheduler or the cpu scheduler selects from among the ready processes in memory which one is to execute next the selected process is allocated the cpu then second point is that it is invoked on events that may lead to choose another process for execution one process is running it is taken out and then another process will run so here comes certain parameters like call interrupts um, clock interrupts io interrupts operating system calls and traps and different signals next type of scheduler is the medium term scheduler it is responsible for suspending and resuming the processes that is why it is also called a swapper so when the processes are swapping in and swapping out between the main memory and the secondary memory swapper is playing its role it makes the swapping decisions based on the current degree of multi programming how many processes are now residing in your ready queue it controls which remains resident in the main memory and which job must be swapped out to reduce the degree of multi programming so swapper is responsible for resuming and suspending the operation of different jobs now let me show you the concept of scheduling and how different three schedulers are playing their role in a single picture this one 
So, in the operating system, the CPU scheduler decides which ready process to run next and which running is to time out. So, the discipline follows the scheduling algorithm. Here, different scheduling algorithms are playing their role. We shall go to the concept of scheduling, uh, scheduling algorithms later on. But here, the transition diagram from one state to another state and how the different schedulers are playing their role are shown. So, this is the disk. This is the disk. So, the programs which are deciding on the disk are stored here they are the new processes. Now, long term scheduler is taking the new processes inside the memory. So, they are becoming the ready processes. Now, ready processes are becoming running processes and running processes may again become ready processes due to the short term scheduling. The running processes may be blocked and suspended block, suspended ready too ready due to medium term scheduler. So, medium term scheduler is playing in between the main memory and the local disk and after the completion of all the scheduler's task and all the activity of a process it goes out of the system. This is the exit system call. So, this particular picture is showing the process is going from which state to which state and where the different schedulers are playing their role. Here comes the degree of multiprogramming. The number of processes present in the main memory at any point of time is called the degree of multiprogramming. It is controlled by the long term scheduler. This is the main memory where I am having four processes P1, P2, P3, and P4. Therefore, the degree of multiprogramming is 4. Lastly, this particular slide is showing the different process profiles which I have already discussed. We are having IO bound processes and we are having processor bound or CPU bound processes. The IO bound processes are spending more time in input output devices. They are having short CPU burst times and for IO bound processes the CPU is underutilized. We are having the CPU bound processes. This CPU bound or processor bound processes are spending more time in doing the computation work than the IO work. So, very few long CPU bursts and for this particular type of processes the IO is underutilized. So, for IO bound processes the CPU is underutilized and for CPU bound processes the IO is underutilized. So, our notion must be to utilize the things properly. So, we should blend a uh, right uh, number of processor bound and um, IO bound processes. The long term scheduler admits the jobs to keep the load balanced between the IO and CPU bound processes. Medium term scheduler ensures the right mix by sometimes swapping out of the swapping out the jobs and resuming them later. The long term scheduler must select a good combination of CPU bound and IO bound processes in order to get the good throughput. Then more CPU bound processes will utilize the CPU more and it will result in less throughput. So, there must be a proper mix of IO bound and CPU bound processes. Here completes my lecture on schedulers, different types of schedulers and IO bound and CPU bound processes. Thank you.